Hello. Happy Wednesday. Is it, is it Wednesday? It feels like about any day but Wednesday to me. I don't know what's happening. There we go. All right. Shelly has our list of announcements here. I'm going to move us our picture over here so we don't how can we see so we can see ourselves. There we go. Look how cute we are. We're so cute. I just want you guys to know I'm trying a new thing. I fixed my hair before I got on the live. Good job. I know. And then I won't be goofing with it. That's and then we won't nice. have to talk about which side of my head I'm trying Is to touch. Is uneven. Okay. Good to know. Okay, starting with announcements. Um, Meg sort of sounds like a man because Meg has some strange upper respiratory thing. Not a cold, just weirdness. Sinus infection. So working on that. Uh, so forgive me if uh, you're if you think you're if you're listening to this and you think you're listening to someone else with Rachel, it is in fact me. I just sound like a man. <laughs> your your. Uh, Phone sex voice. This is my phone sex voice. Yeah. <laughs> Oops, wrong show. Oops, <laughs> uh, Okay, tomorrow we're going to have our How the Hell episode number two, Rachel DiPiazza, who is a mining engineer, um, currently working for Core Mining. Uh, I had an opportunity actually to, well, hire Rachel, I think twice, um, as an intern, as a full-time employee, and work with her, and she is a delight, and we're very excited to have her and she has a great story too. She does. And they're all like 10 minutes or less. So you should definitely listen because it's, she's great and she has a great story. Yes. Um, we are going to be on the Chris Salem radio show tomorrow, Sustainable Success at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. Uh, Shelly's going to post that in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a live show? That is a radio yeah. show. Yep, that is a live radio show. All right. Well, can't bleep those words out. Yeah, we'll have to ask for the parameters before we start. Yeah, well, it's probably yeah. just better to keep it clear. <laughs> Maybe we just should assume. We'll just try not assume. to swear. That might be a good... Yeah, it's not our show, so we should, should swear. Yeah. Angie's on. Angie, oh. I flew over your town on the way from Vancouver to Minneapolis last week, and I thought of you as I was dark and I was passing over. I couldn't actually... Uh, I missed when I, we were right over you. I was going to take a picture, and I missed it. Oh, she's in North Dakota. Oh, I hope it's warm. I hope it's warm. Um, Shelly will be at the SEDC meeting tomorrow night at 530. It's their annual meeting. Paulette Davidson, the CEO of Regional Monumental Health. Monument. Monument Health will be speaking. So if you are inclined to see her uh, speak, then you should maybe go to that meeting too. It's somewhere. It's in the Holiday Inn. Oh, mm -hmm. at the holiday Inn. If you are local. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never mind my funny <laughs> joke. Uh, <laughs> I just think I'm a rapper. It's no big deal. Um, I will be facilitating a retreat for an organization, engineering company, on Friday in Deadwood. And oh, I yeah. will be, yeah, I will be at the Fruit of the Vine fundraiser in Rapid City. It's a fundraiser for. The Dakota Coral Union in Rapid City. It is uh, basically you pay your money and you go and you drink wine. And then the one of their big fundraisers is so funny. You buy a cork for 15 bucks and then you turn your cork in and then they pull the corks out and then you get a free bottle of wine of worth at least 15 bucks plus, you know, and some sometimes you win like the 150 bottle of wine. Oh, oh. Bottle of wine. And, you know, so somebody said, you. so it's like a gamble. I'm like, if everyone gets a bottle of wine, there's no gambling. That's all upside. That's win. That's hashtag winning. Right so they must have their wine donated? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. yeah. They I have was a, like, that seems like a losing proposition for, for the fundraiser yeah. people. Yeah. So oh. I don't know if everybody gets a bottle of wine. I don't know if they just pick 10 or what, but there is wine and cheese, and it's really fun. So Sounds like a good time. Yeah, it's me. at the Doll. So if you're in Rapid on Saturday night and you like wine, come hang out. It's going to be fun. I will be there. Uh, I'm off to Virginia on Monday uh, to Roanoke for, to work with an insurance group there and a really dynamic and exciting company that I'm really excited to get to know better. What are you laughing about? <laughs> Don't even, I, it's a joke from college. I'm not saying it out loud. I, sorry, you said Roanoke. <laughs> it just made me think of it. Oh, I'll tell you later. Anyway, so if you're in Roanoke or in Virginia, Roanoke area, Blacksburg, uh, let me know. I'd like to um, catch up with you. 
uh, there. And then from there, I am um, hanging out with a friend in Blacksburg for a couple days, and then I'm flying direct to San Francisco for the NASA <laughs> Manufacturing Supply Chain Conference, which will be really interesting. That's in Menlo Park, just south of the San Francisco. So that will be a crazy couple of weeks. Awesome. I'm excited about it, but I gotta make a note to myself about that right now. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Weekly writing prompt. So reminder for those of you who have a planner, this uh, information is in the planner. Well, not the writing prompt, right? I clearly don't have a planner. Is the prompt in the planner? No, the prompt's the blank yeah. spot to write it. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the, we will give you the prompt each week. If you have a planner, there's a spot in the bottom right corner for you to write that down. It says um, uh, gratitude or something else. IX prompt. IX prompt. Strange. Um, if you don't have a planner and you like planners or if you just like to be able to journal, um, this has an additional planner with it and you could just journal in there. You can find those on Amazon. Um, just uh, go on to Amazon and look for IX Leadership Planner, and you should be able to find that pretty simply. There, um, oh, it's on the website. It's on our website. It's on our website too. So you can buy it right there. Uh, okay. So the weekly writing prompt is: write down five things you are grateful for at work. Ooh, what if you can't think of five? Then. Yeah. Think about some other <laughs> well, I think so. One thing that I was actually asked about about a year ago now from uh, from somebody, and they were like, you know, I'm not really that excited to go to work, and I don't. I'm afraid I've kind of lost my mojo about why I'm there and what my connection is to the to the company and the work. And so, what I advised her was to actually think about making someone else's life in at work better. So. Let's say you work with somebody, how can you make their life great? Or what can you do for them to, to help them have a good day at work? And what happens is when you do that, um, then you start sort of getting feedback, good feedback, and that makes you feel more excited about being at work yourself. And plus you're making somebody else's day better. So maybe if you don't have five things you're grateful for at work, maybe you have five people, or maybe there's five clients that you are happy to support or something like that. So mm, that's I like what I would it. say. Um, the quote for this week in the planner uh, from the book is, the answer to anyone's aspirational goal can be just as simple, keep working. As simple as keep working. That's on page 140. So uh, don't give up. Don't be a sissy. You got this. And if you really can't think of five things at work and you hate your job, then maybe you should think about getting a new job. We'll not talk about that today, though. Uh, we're going to talk about self-care, but before we talk about self-care, we have one more announcement that is a little bit out of order, and I should have looked at this beforehand. Uh, so, uh, for those of you who want to be really awesome project managers but don't know anything about it, and think that you don't want to be a project manager because you don't know anything about it, and it's not really your thing, and you have no business doing it, you're wrong. And guess who can prove you wrong? Rachel Headley. Right, so there's project management uh, boot camp March 2nd and 3rd in Rapid City at the BHSU Rapid City campus. And then on more, March 4th through the 6th, there's guiding organizational change. And bonus, if you go to the guiding organizational change part of the uh, training, you'll learn a lot about IX leadership and how to use it and how to help people through change more quickly. Mm -hmm. So. That stuff. is an opportunity for double dipping. Um, if you're looking to get project management certified, this will count towards those certification or an, and or help you get there uh, for your test. Uh, information is on our website, and so you can find it there. Of course, if you have any questions about us, drop us a note, and Shelly will magic you some information. Yeah, there's a on the website, there is a button right at the top of the of the page that's products and it's it's in that products list there's two the both classes are outlined there with some details and you can pay online if you are uh, at a corporation and you want them to pay for you to go and you need an invoice that's the kind of stuff that Shelly can help you with so all right awesome okay so I did well, I have them right here job. so with it today <clears throat> doesn't Me feel too. like it sometimes okay 
So uh, it, today's all about self-care. So what Shelly told us, so she talked to a bunch of you and you're all like super stressed out and really um, frustrated, some of you, and some of you are just like super intense time. And so she thought it would be a great week to talk about combating stress and burnout. So um, the question starting from the top or from the bottom, I guess, the fewest votes are, why does self-care matter in the workplace? I have something in my eye. Would that's irrelevant? Should I carry on? Carry on. Self care. <laughs> Take care of your eyeballs. <laughs> um, we're, we're living it, man. We're living like, it live always. Uh, so, self care matter in the workplace. Well, this is a really big deal because, uh, of course, healthy employees are um, will be more productive, happier, represent you better. All the good things about being a healthy person, and of course, that includes our mental health. Um, that doesn't uh, necessarily mean that you all get to spend half your day meditating or in, you know, book club or whatever. But it does mean that you have to be aware of where the stress levels are because there are times where you should be able to work extra hard or extra intensely. But if you do that all the time, then it's like, then you're cooked and then you don't have any extra to give um, in those times that you really need it or um, in any kind of special way. Yeah, so a lot of work has been done in the uh, occupational health and wellness field around um, what they call presenteeism. So in business, we talk a lot about uh, retention, turnover, and uh, managing those numbers so that they make good sense. The other amplifying issue with decreased productivity that we can see is in an organization where um, the executives say, you know, we, we don't have a turnover issue. We don't have a retention issue. Um, we've had the same people for a long time and blah, blah, blah. But if you really dig into their presenteeism, meaning how many days of work do people miss uh, because they're unwell um, or, or because they're caring for someone else in their family who's unwell, if you start to dig into those presenteeism numbers, you'll see that that can have as big of an impact um, on your company's ability to be productive as high turnover can. And so it's really important to educate employees in the workplace, educate yourself about self-care um, because even still today, and especially uh, if you're joining us from right around here today on the live, um, people in the world still are really driven to not, are, are encouraged, I would even say, and are made to feel guilty for taking care of themselves. So we've all done it, and it's like, oh God, I feel I feel so crummy, but I'm gonna go to work. I have this really bad cold, but I gotta go to work, I gotta be there. Uh, and you get to work, and most of the time people are like, ew, stay away from me, but I'm glad you came in because you have all this work to do, so go do it. Now, I've worked in places like that, but I've worked in places that you call and you'd say, I don't feel good. Okay, I, I'm going to come in, but I'll be late. And they say, no, no, please, for the love of God, stay don't away from me. Um, we can, and now when there's all the remote opportunities, you know, you can VPN in, blah, blah, blah. So I think that it it's actually better for everyone in the organization if you keep the infections away <laughs> from the people. <laughs> so that's, I mean it matters in the workplace because there's a lot to be said for your mental um, awareness. Mm -hmm. Even last week when I didn't feel good, I thought, God, I probably could go do this client delivery and I probably could be on this phone call and I probably could do all these things. And then when I went back, I didn't do all those things. And then when I went back later in the week when I felt a little bit better and looked at some of the emails I sent out and talked to Rachel and Shelly about some of the things I said, I was like, ew, I was not even, not not good, not me, not in the headspace. Well, the other thing too about self-care is part of that comes down to too about the culture type stuff that we always, always talk about, which is, I remember when I was working in a stabilizer job, but it was a stabilizer job, but I was also pretty <coughs> isolated from the team because it was a, like I was one-on-one -on -one with the computer basically most of the time. And I would walk or walk over to a friend's office and we would talk every, like every morning at nine o'clock for like 15 minutes. And that was just what I needed to feel connected and uh, had, so I needed some of that team. I didn't know that's what I was needing, uh, but I needed some of that team feeling. And uh, we had something in common. We both played volleyball. 
and he was a coach and I was a player. So um, I asked him questions and we talked about how, you know, practice was going and all the other stuff. And so um, self-care is also being aware of what kind of work you need to do or what kind of environment you need. And, and can you get some of that somewhere? Because if you don't have that, that's when not only are you busy, but you're also stressed out because you're in an awkward fitting role. And that adds a whole other layer of anxiety and stress uh, to your experience at work. So um, be thinking, be thinking about that too, as you, as you are evaluating how you can take care, better care of yourself at work. Um, okay. The second question is what do Megan and Rachel do to practice self-care? Uh, well, I actually was thinking on my way here. Um, I need a day, a work day where I'm not meeting with human beings. None of them, not even these two. Like I need a day to get things done because it makes me feel super anxious and crazy when, and I couldn't, honestly, I couldn't list out 10 things that I feel like I know I need to get done. I just know I need to spend some quality time with myself and my computer <laughs> without, without sure. any distractions or meetings or anything. So I can talking, yeah, interacting. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I think that, I mean, I do lots of other things, right? I run, we work out four days a week. I hang out with my kids. We play board games. I like to hike, all that normal shit, stuff, stuff. Um, but I think it's really important to have a little conversation with yourself to Rachel's point about, you know, what what does self-care look like at work? Because you can't, you know your culture type, you can't do the same things, you can't do the things that you don't love that aren't your default all the time, all the time, all the time. So if you're, you're self-driven and you're in a role where you're in meetings all of the time, it's okay to take a day where you don't do meetings all day long. Now that might not be, you know, practical. Maybe you're in a role where it's you're, let's say you're a doctor. If you're a doctor, guess what? You're meeting with people all day long because that is your job, but then take a day off or make sure you build in, you know, a day that you write notes uh, or an afternoon or a morning or whatever it looks like for you. So that's my, my work uh, self-care is to be very aware about what I need in my work life. And part of it is as soon as we get off of this call, I won't have to, I'll say it now and then I won't have to say it later. Shelly, please book out a day on my calendar yeah, next week. Yeah, she's already, <laughs> already doing it. on it. Uh, where <laughs> I don't have to be like block it. I don't want to be anywhere. I want to be in my stinky sweatpants after I worked out all day long if I want to, working away furiously at my computer at my house. So that's one thing I do. I like it when you wear your stinky sweatpants at your house. <laughs> Everybody appreciates that except for Quillen. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's they're used to it. Yeah. Um, my self care around work for me is really, um, uh, and honestly, it's about traveling. I love uh, travel. I like the challenge of travel. I like the chaos of travel. I like it all. And I have had travel in my work life since I was the, like one of my very first assignments at, right out of college was to fly to DC and go to the Library of Congress, which has a map library and do some research. And so from the very beginning, when I was 20 or whatever it was, 21, I was traveling for work. And for me, if I am in the office too long, and I'm doing the same routine things all the time. It's just too much um, routine for me. And that's one of the ways that I keep feeling creative and challenged. And, and the nice, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I love the fact that we work nationwide and into Canada right now is that I, we get to go see new places, learn new things, meet new cultures, try different food, explore different cities, you um, know, all of that stuff is I, I really, really love. Um, and I make sure that that's part of the jobs that I get, because if I don't get that, I'm just not satisfied um, with what I need to do. So um, that's one way I do it day in, day out. I also, because I like the chaos and I like the change and new ideas and new things all the time. 
Um, you know, we are very open about, you know, like I spent all day Saturday at an event. So then I took half the day off on <laughs> Thursday and I got my hair done or <coughs> we book nail appointments in the middle of the day or whatever. Like we, we're very lucky that we get to control our own schedule, but, um, but that also helps kind of break the day up and that way it, um, I'm not always just stuck at my desk for the whole week with no variation because to Meg's point we have a lot of work to do but I also can't feel like I'm trapped in the office all the time because otherwise I go a little nuts so. one other thing that um and I learned this because I used to be a major offender of this rule uh or well life rule whatever um I learned this when I really started running a lot uh don't skip meals because it makes you cranky used to make me cranky and now I'm now I just say hey listen I can't talk to you we were t talking about something yesterday and Rachel and I kept talking around each other and I'm like what in this going on and then I was like oh I am hungry and it's lunchtime like I, Shit, I should have figured that out for myself <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, fi I figured it out for you guys uh, anyway so we kind of have a hard rule in our world um, mm. combined self-care we do not try and talk about serious things at lunchtime or any other meal time um, and if we do get down that road and it gets to run into somebody being hungry then we say like doesn't matter who it is even if I say Rachel snack you're cranky time. you need a snack or if she says Meg you're being a bitch you need a snack doesn't matter who says it it's yeah well, I've never said because so you're nice. nicer than me I would say that is true um, so I think that's really an important thing and we it's really easy to fall into a trap of oh my gosh I'm so busy I have to I just don't have time for lunch. Um, and then for a while it was like, oh, don't eat lunch at your desk. Well, yeah, if you can avoid eating lunch at your desk, you're not combining your time off with your time on, but whatever, that's it. I worked at a place where there wasn't really anywhere to go. to go, so you just ate at your desk, or maybe you go eat in somebody else's office. Um, but the other thing I would add to that uh, is, skipping meals, skipping breaks, whether you, you know it's a bathroom break or going to get water or whatever, um, it makes you feel like you're, it gives you some martyrdom in your head. And then you start to feel like, and I don't care, me. yeah, who your, what your culture type is. Um, then you start to feel like, oh, well, I work harder than Janice and, you know, I always skip my lunch and whatever. And I guarantee you, you will never work for a company. You might work for a manager who's a stabilizer and allows you to get away with this. You'll never work for a company that's going to say, well, you, you're you definitely, yeah, you skipped your lunches. I Good for you, and we should award you more. No. They're always going to say, that was your choice, dum-dum, probably minus the dum-dum part. They'll think it. But they They'll think it. it, but they won't say it. So implied. we get ourselves backed into a corner of I'm working harder than other people by skipping breaks, but it's that's really on you. And so Shelly said to me, I'm sorry, I'm going on. No, carry on. Shelly said to I me agree. when she sent me a text and said, don't hate me, we're going to have a topic on self-care. And I said, I love talking about self-care. I am like the queen of self-care and everything it stands for. I said, what I can't stand are pants shitters who don't take care of themselves and act like it's everybody else's fault. Responsibility. Yeah. So don't be that guy. Don't skip meals. Take days off. If you're sick, stay home for the rest of us. Yeah, right. Amen. Um, and that kind of goes into the last question, which got lots of votes. Um, how do you promote self-care in the workplace? And I think a lot of what Meg just said is really important. It's, you know, a lot of times we all get PTO or holidays or vacation days and we or sick leave that we don't use. And we all somehow take pride as Americans generally in not taking holidays or not taking, and, and a lot of that is because your boss, uh, A, maybe doesn't want you to be gone because that's a hardship. Sometimes that happens. The other thing is, is for that, um, you know, a lot of us think, well, if I leave, it's actually more work when I come back. And this, some of that's true. Or there's, I think a lot of us deep down are like, well, if I leave and everything's okay, does that mean that I'm not important and that sort of thing? Oh. Yeah, I never thought. <laughs> yeah, like if the yeah, I know you're an independent. <laughs> so if the if the world keeps turning without you, I just talked with a friend of ours, Nate Keeveman, yesterday about how, you know, when you don't have access to your phone 
because your international travel or like we were on a cruise over Thanksgiving um, and we couldn't physically use the phone. There was no cell signal. Um, I was like, I thought it was awesome. And I didn't worry at all because I know that back home everything's fine and I wasn't bust. But Nate is the CEO of his company and he was like, it was really hard for me not to be available. And I was like, well, but that's part of the magic, right? Is that you have to, I think what you do in your culture, in your work place is you encourage people to take their leave. You don't celebrate the fact that some people haven't taken one sick day off this year. Well, that's nonsense. Of course, people need to take sick days. Of course, people have a point doctor appointments they should be going to. Of course, people have days they don't feel good, but they come to work anyway and make everyone else sick. Of course, people have kids and families that might need their support when they're sick. So um, I just think there's a real uh, weird relationship that Americans have with time away from work. And I think we really need to encourage at our companies that that is a thing, that, that take, your, take your lunch, uh, and if you're taking your lunch at your desk, well then watch a movie or do something besides working. If that's you know, like really take that, those breaks and that time away so that you can actually perform when you, when you're at your desk working or in a meeting or on travel or whatever it might be. Yeah. Um, a few HR Meg checking in here, a few things you can do, uh, technically for your business. A lot of organizations nowadays write in their PTO policy that, uh, thou shalt take at least 40 hours for the year. Um, like you can't carry it over kind of thing. Well, yeah, they'll take out the carryover rule, but they'll also say like every supervisor of people is required to make sure every one of their people takes at least a 40 day vacation. Now, some people say, oh, I don't have anywhere to go I mean, or 40 hours of vacation, 40 hours of vacation, not a, not a Jesus vacation, 40 days, 40 days. Would that be wasn't a vacation. Awesome. I mean, that's like life goals, man. 40 yeah. days vacation. Oh, um, 40 hours of vacation. Some people will fight you on it because I'll say, well, I don't have anywhere to go. Or we did have, you know, people who would say, listen, I don't have enough money to go on a vacation. And I would say, that is fine. You can just stay, home. stay home or go for in walks, sleep pajamas. in, whatever you're going to do. So, uh, you can write it into your PTO policy that they have to take it. You can make it so you don't, can't roll it over so that they can't keep dragging it on, which is a good accounting measure, PS, uh, for you CFOs that are listening. Um, and then what else? You can start a wellness program. It doesn't have to be something you spend a ton of money on. There are scads of websites out there that give you tips and tricks and how you can talk about wellness in the workplace. Um, yeah, you can do, I mean, my experience alone, you could do anything from um, paying your people's, um, gym memberships yep. to, um, actually providing on site walking trail or whatever it might be. So there's just a huge range. And mo do, what about like mental health? Do, do a lot of companies have, what do you call it? EAP. EAP. Yeah. Employee assistance program. Is yep. That what Employee for? assistance program. A lot of companies will have that. Uh, most times your insurance will actually now when you say your insurance yeah you your health health or work the companies or the individuals sorry the the company's insurance if you are on your organization's insurance a lot of health insurance programs have an eap built into them mm -hmm. or some part the the company is insured to care for your mental health it's all anonymous there's no way ever 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 not even the hr person that processes the bill and sends it off to the accounting people there's no way for anyone to ever know who's taking advantage of that so EAP is a great tool that you can offer. Talk to your insurance agent about that. Um, there, there are just so many cool things that you can do to be uh, wellness forward. Frankly, if people aren't doing them, it's it, it, by choice and excuse. Yeah, one There's of the one of my of one of my most favorite things, which was a really a mental health and <clears throat> team building and physical fitnessy kind of thing was <laughs> in Sioux Falls when I lived there, they had a like a corporate Olympics. I forget what they called it. But like so the, all of these like super awkward desk jockey teams would get together and they'd go to the local Y and they'd have to like paddle a uh, inflatable across the pool was one and or tug of war or just really simple. Some of them were really really athletic, like shuttle races and stuff. And some were more like silly like uh dunking your ceo and how often could you dunk your your own team could dunk your own ceo so some of it, and that was like 
really fun. We had such a good time. And it was all really about getting out of the office, having fun. You know, you, everyone got one day off basically to go to this event, but then you, you know, you all had matching t-shirts and, but it wasn't really that expensive. Like if you added up the amount of money that company spent on that, it was very, very small. And I tell you, it gained so much in value and, you know, morale and health and happiness and exciting stuff happening. It was just really great. Yeah. One last thing that made me think of that I would offer up is in terms of promoting self self care in the workplace, um, make sure you're leading by example. Because if you show up to work sick mm -hmm. or if you show up to work the day you find out your mom passes away or whatever it is or and your dog dies or something Yeah, dog terrible. dies and you're completely out of it, people are going to be like, well, that's the expectation then. And Even if you don't really have that expectation, they will read you instead of ask. Yeah. they Whatever you show them is the way. Yes, this is the way. The, way. the Mandalorian. That's oh, their, is that what it is? Yeah, the Mandalorian. This is the way. All right. So anyway, yeah, be the example uh, of what you want self-care to look like in the workplace. And that's what people will follow. And even if they don't follow, then when you tell them, I expect you to take a week off this year, they can't say, well, you haven't taken a week off in whatever. I can't remember you ever taking a day. So they might not necessarily automatically follow you, but then they won't have the excuse that you don't do it. So that's right. Just like parenting, take away all potential excuses. That's right. And distractions is important. Yeah, that too. <laughs> That's my parenting technique. As we have a toy on our desk. <laughs> that is a UV robot. So theoretically, when you put it in the UV in the sunlight, it changes colors. The oh. eyeballs or something. I haven't done it yet, but it's oh. pretty smart, huh? Yeah. Super nerdy, but maybe it says mohawk changes color. Oh, that would be the coolest. Anyway. Okay. So it's great to see you all. Thank you for tuning in. And if you have any questions, you know where to find us. You betcha. Lead powerfully. Change the world. Bye, everybody. Bye.